Hello, my name is Abdul Mati Asiri and I would like to welcome you in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. In this video, I'd like to talk about the circling maneuver, which is something that you'll be doing both in your initial training and your recurrent training as well. For this video, we'll be do, uh, using Grand County International Airport, Moses Lake, that is Kilo Mike Whiskey Hotel. And we'll be doing VR1, runway 1 for left, circle to land, runway 3 to right. So we'll do the approach for this runway and then break visual to land on the opposite runway which is basically what, an, what a circling approach is I would like to highlight a few things here in the approach charts and not get uh, into all the details but a few things that I'd like to remind you of and one of them, this is a VR approach and in the 737NG we'll be loading the approach out of the NAV database in the FMC and we'll be using LNAV VNAV but still we need to make sure that we tune and identify the VR in the uh, nav panel. So this is 112.6 for this approach and it is Echo Papa Hotel, a freighter VR. So in the nav panel, we need to make sure that 112.6 is tuned in the active side. And we identify it by verifying that we have Echo Papa Hotel displayed here in the ND. Uh, another thing that I'd like to point it out to you, which is, as you see, the altitude over the final approach fix here is indicated as 4,000. And here in the mist as well, it says climbing lift turn to 4,000 outbound via Mike Whiskey Hotel VR, radio 054 to bottom and hold. The altitude here is uh, indicated as 4,000 both for the mist and for the final approach fix. In the CDU, it might be indicated as at or above 4,000. So if I open the CDU here and we go to the legs page, you see it's indicated at or above for both points and that's fine. You'll see this in many approaches and you don't have to change, you don't have to erase the, uh, the above here and leave it as it is 4000. So again, this is just fine and you see it in many, many approaches. Uh, for the MDA, uh, we'll go here to the circuit minimums, so circuit to land minimums. And for this specific approach, we have two set of minimums, one with Gabby and one without Gabby. And Gabby is this point here on the approach, and it is six miles from Echo Papa Hotel, from the VR. So if you have the DME from the VR available to you, which we, which we do have uh, in the ND, then we can utilize this minimums, and in our case as well, in the, in the legs page here. Gabby is there and we have the DME to Gabby so we have it both ways you can say that I have the DME from the VR so I can identify Gabby point or you can say that I have Gabby there in the next page so we can identify it so we can go with this set of minimums I have talked about the MDA and the DA in a different video but just to refresh your information about it for the circuit to land minimums it's based on the approach speed However, the approach category of the airplane will decide how far can you fly uh, from the runway and being uh, clear of obstacles. That is what they call a protected area or obstruction clearance area. The, uh, the circling is done mostly using gear down flaps 15. So we'll have gear down flaps 15 for most of the approach. Actually, we'll not go for flaps 30 until we are somewhere here in the downwind. And uh, actually what the FCTM says is to go flaps 30 before turning base. So this is what's the wording mentioned in the CTM. So usually you will do it here in the downwind. So since we are doing gear down flaps 15, most of the maneuver will go with this highest minimum here. Now another thing just to remember for the circling minimums, the MDA for circling, you do not add 50 feet. So we'll set this altitude as it is in the BFT 1820. All right, so 1820 is set as our MDA. Now, as far as the uh, protected area or the obstruction clearance area, if you go to the FCTM, there are two tables, one for FAA and one for ICAO, and it will give you how far can you fly away from the, from the runway thresholds and being uh, at uh, or clear of obstacles, okay? So if you go for the FA, it says for approach category D, it is 2.3 miles. So that means 2.3 miles 
from each runway threshold even the runways that you are not landing on you are safe okay so now remember that we are flying at a relatively low altitude and we are doing a visual maneuver so we are about 700 feet AGL now compared to that to, to a normal traffic pattern which is 1500 AGL so here we have a lower visibility and we are flying at a lower altitude so that's why we need to make sure that we are flying within uh, the protected area when we do the uh, the visual part of the maneuver which is basically when you level at the MDA and you start breaking to join a downwind either to left downwind or right downwind you need to make sure that you are flying within that protected area for this a specific training scenario what they do in the simulator is they will give you the minimum required visibility for the approach which is two miles so even if the protected area is 2.3 or 2.5 or whatever standard you are following you need to make sure that you are within two miles to be able to maintain visual contact with the runway so this is somehow will make it a little bit challenging for you since we are uh, close uh, but this is what we'll do for this approach since again for this specific training scenario this is uh, what they do now i suggest for you a few things when you go for your initial training or your recurrent training make sure to take a lot of notes okay note the approach that they use for the circle knows what is the protected area that your airline are suggesting for you to to utilize uh, which mda do they use are they using this mda or this mda and so on and so forth and that will make your life easier in your uh, next recurrent training because usually the the uh, the training scenario the weather the airplane weight the approach that they use for each maneuver is the same usually they do not change the training scenario much in the in the uh, in your simulator training okay so again just make sure to take a lot of notes and uh, that will make your life a lot easier in your next recurrent training now there is one more standard used to identify the protected area or obstruction clearance area for a circuit land which is called TURBS uh, I'm not getting into it but TURBS will give you a more a protected area to to uh, to fly and be uh, clear of obstacles again for this specific training scenario actually it doesn't matter what the the uh, the area is because they will give you the minimum required visibility of two miles and this will take us to the next point here which is a technique that you'll hear a lot uh, in your training which is to put a ring or a circle around the runway that you are landing on and that circle will give you an idea to maintain a good distance when you do your downwind and your base so again now we need to be within two miles for this training scenario so we'll put a ring of about 1.8 miles uh, from runway 3 to right and that will ensure for us that we are within the visual range or uh, to be able to maintain a visual contact with the runway so we'll do that so if you go to the fixed page and you put runway 3 to right and then okay uh, double R there okay so runway 3 to right and then here we'll put a distance of 1.8 so slash 1.8 so anything less than 2 miles 1.9, 1.8, 1.7 and if I bring up the ND here and we'll sequence to the runway. So here is runway 1 for left and this is runway 3 to right and now we have this ring of 1.8 miles. So when I fly on a downwind and base, if I'm close to this circle, I know that I'm within that 2 miles range. Uh, one more thing here about the ring is this is another technique that some instructors will suggest for you to do. Remember when we fly on the downwind, we will take uh, the time or start the stopwatch when we are a beam the runway threshold for about 30 seconds or 25 seconds and then we'll turn from downwind to base to final so this part of the approach is visual so you need to make sure that you look outside and see when you are a beam the runway threshold but another aid that you can utilize to help you with that is if you draw a radial here so 90 degrees to the runway heading and that will indicate for you the beam point if i bring up the approach or the airport chart 
So we are learning runway 32, right? Runway heading is 324. So if you subtract 90 degrees, because I want this line here, it's going to be 234. If I want, if I'm doing a, a right downwind and I'm coming on the other direction, then the radius is going to be 054. So we'll do a 234 radian again in the fixed page. 234. And that will give me the radial, which will indicate for me when I am a beam uh, the runway threshold. Again, if I was doing a right downwind, it's going to be 054 radian. And as you can see, it draws, uh, draws it on the other side. Now again, if your company is using this technique, go ahead and use it and make sure to note these numbers ahead of time. Just write it somewhere in your chart. And again, you don't want to think about these numbers when you are in the simulator, in the hold, getting ready to do, to do the second. Okay, so we talked about the MDA, uh, touchdown, MSA, missed approach. Yeah, one more thing here. For this specific approach, and this is something that you need, again, to familiarize yourself with these approaches before even going to your recurrent training or your initial. Just ask the pilot who just returned from their training, what approach did they give him for the circle? And start familiarizing yourself with the, with the approach itself. Here we have two VRs, as you can see. One for the approach itself, and the second one for the missed approach. This is very important to tune and identify. The second one, if you want to show a good airmanship, is to tune this frequency on the standby in the NAC panel. So 1150. Just if you want to again show a good airmanship, just tune it on the standby. It's not as important as having this VR in the active and tuned and identified, but something to, to, to think about. All right, I think this is all I wanted to cover as far as the chart goes. So now we'll go to the uh, PMDG and we'll do the simulation and we'll talk further about the circling maneuver. Okay, here we are in the hold. And remember, let's assume that we are done with all the, uh, the checklist, the briefing, the numbers are done and everything. And you advised your uh, ATC is semi structure in this case that you are ready for the approach and he said you are clear for VR1 runway 1 for left approach circle to land runway 3 to right so that means now you can exit the hold but as you remember from the previous video that I made about the holding if you are holding over the final approach fix before exiting the hold just take a look and see where is the airplane with respect to that final approach fix in this case, for example, we are four miles, so that is plenty of uh, space for us to go gear down, flaps 15, and get ready to start the maneuver. If we were here, let's say within one mile from the final approach fix, will I exit the hold? I'm still at flaps five, the gear is still up, I wouldn't do it. If I'm here somewhere, I will not exit the hold personally, because I'm not sure of the behavior of the airplane in exiting the hold at this at this place and then whether it will be stabilized after crossing the final approach fix it might do some turns before it stabilizes on the final approach course so what i suggest for you give yourself and the airplane some time some space and somewhere here you might start thinking of exiting the hold or even waiting until you are here and exit the hold now, if you, decide, if you decide to do that, let's say that I was two miles from the final approach fix and I decided to do one more turn in the hold. Now, to show a good airmanship and good situation awareness, do it like announcing it to the other pilot, saying, you know, we are too close to the final approach fix. The airplane is not configured yet. So let's do one more turn in the hold and then we'll exit the hold. Your instructor will be impressed by your airmanship and good situation awareness. All right, so let's assume again, we are ready now. So exit halt, confirm, confirmed, execute. The next thing, now three to two miles from the final approach fix, whether you are doing a circle or any other approach, you need to go gear down, flaps 15. So we'll go ahead and do that, gear down, flaps 15. 
anytime you go gear down flat 15 you need to arm the speed brake and you make sure that you have the green light there now two more things that we need to do which is to set our MDA so we'll go 1900 and to verify that we have a proper pitch mode so in this case we have VNAP path so this is what we want if for any reason during the hold I was having here alt hold then I need to go back to VNAP to make sure that the airplane will descend after crossing the final approach fix okay so we need to do these three to two miles from the final approach fix after exiting the hold so you go gear down flap 15 arm the speed brake make sure to set your MDA and verify that you have the proper pitch mode so after that everything is good we are just watching the airplane to make sure that the airplane will start descending on Vienna path after crossing the final approach fix Okay, we are crossing Echo Papa Hotel and the airplane now is descending. So that's perfect. Now, what you need to do is to set up yourself for, for the maneuver. And one of the things that you can do now, which is pre-select your heading bug. So now the heading is 143. If you can see the heading bug is aligned with the heading. We're not talking about the track. We add 45 degrees to this number. So it's going to be 188. And we move the heading, pre-select it to get ready to intercept the downwind. Again, believe it or not, I write these numbers in my chart. Okay, if I forget to put it before the, uh, uh, before the, uh, the training, then I do it in the briefing, but I write it on my chart and I, I'll show you one of the charts. It was not written the best way, but I'll show it to you. Okay, so you'll find my chart is something like this. I mean, I was in a hurry. Actually, I was in the simulator, I think. And I said, you know what? I need to write the numbers now. So later on, before my check ride, I have it ready. And I'll, I'll write it somehow smaller and better. But these numbers I all use. So this is the heading that uh, I do. It was 148. Uh, that is for the downward which I'm gonna mention in just a second and this is the uh, 189er as the heading that I go to I do not want to do even simple math in the simulator because believe it or not with the pressure and the stress in the simulator even doing simple math to add 45 degrees plus whatever heading you have here sometimes it's uh, it's a little bit hard to do so do it like this, uh, not like this, I mean just the smaller numbers and in a better format. I'm going to show you another chart where I did the, uh, the numbers uh, consciously, let's say. So this is, this is another cycling approach that we do in Anchorage. Again, all the numbers I have here. Okay, I said the, the ring for this specific training scenario as they suggest to put it 2.7 miles uh, runway 7 left for some reason that instructor in that training scenario he said to use flaps 40 before the final approach fix so I said okay you want to flaps 40 we'll do flaps 40 flaps 40 60% uh, in one and so on I even draw how am I doing the the uh, the uh, uh, the circle itself angles times whatever uh, so this is when I say take a lot of loads and uh, and make sure to put it on your chart or somewhere uh, believe me it will make your life easier in the simulator I highlighted here the missed approach because sometimes Again, under the pressure, I try to find what is the missed approach altitude. Okay, so I put a, a rectangle around it just to make it visible for me. So those are 
the things that I do personally to to make my life easy in the simulator again do not put it like this just smaller numbers uh, be discreet about it you can be as color colorful as you like and draw whatever lines you like if you decide to do that on the chat in Jebison you need to take a picture because anytime Jebison do an update in your iPad uh, then everything is gonna go so what I do is I do these numbers and then I take a picture of it have it in, in my album and then when I do the next training I just go to my album I just have it under a specific name and I just review it uh, again this is what I do personally but let's go back here and continue all right not much to do at this point you are just mounting the airplane waiting for the airplane to level at the MDA waiting for the pilot monitoring to call the approach light inside or runway inside so just take a deep breath and get ready for the rest of the maneuver Here, 1,000 feet to level off. I'm going to bring up the screens here so I can use the clock or the stopwatch. So now, Vina path, it will change to Vina vault. And when that happens, we'll go Alt Hold, set our missed approach altitude, and click on heading select. Okay. And of course at this time usually the pilot monitoring will say approach light inside 12 o'clock or when you level at the MDA. Remember you don't want to start the maneuver unless you have visual contact with the approach lights, the runway or the runway environment. So there's Vina Alt, so we'll click Alt Hold, set the missed approach altitude 4000 in this scenario and then click on heading select and now the airplane will start to turn to the right so we can join a left downwind now the question is how long are you gonna fly on this heading the technique that you'll hear a lot is 30 seconds so 30 seconds from when the uh, airplane go back to wings level now as you'll notice shortly the roll rate the airplane will turn back quickly at the beginning here from 25 to about 5 degrees and then at 5 degrees or 4 degrees start slowing down a lot so you don't want to wait for it to go back to fully wings level maybe at around 3 degrees or 4 degrees bank angle it is the time to start the clock and this is what I do personally so see now the roll rate is a little bit quick at the beginning and then it slows down so right there I start my clock and will go for 30 seconds now the question comes okay so which heading should I turn to after flying on this heading now you want to parallel the runway right so if I go back to the airport chart We are somewhere here now. As you can see, this is the airplane symbol. So we are somewhere here. If you want to parallel the runway, the runway heading is 144. So if the wind was calm, I'll be turning to a heading of 144. But in this case, we have a crosswind from the left about 10 knots. And if I go to my actual notes from my simulator I have about four degrees here into the wind 
so the heading was 144 for the runway and I have 148 so let's say about 5 degrees 5 degrees into the wind if you have a 10 knots crosswind that will do for you so after 30 seconds we'll turn to a heading of 149 Okay, so heading 149. And then I'll monitor the position of the track with respect to this ring that I have drawn. Again, this ring is 1.8, it's not exactly 2 miles, so even if I'm slightly outside, I know that I'm okay. During the time that we turned from uh, to join the downwind, until now somewhere here is uh, where you want to go flaps 30 set your target speed and landing checklist okay so i'm gonna go flaps 30 we'll set our target speed and we request landing checklist now of course we'll keep an eye on the track with respect to the circle and with respect we want it to be parallel to the runway extended center line so we know that the airplane is not drifting toward the runway so this is perfect a little bit inside but that's fine Actually, you can do some corrections, so you can 2 degrees to the right if you like, you don't have to, to stick with it. Now, when to start the clock, as I said, you need to look outside now, and when the airplane is a beam, the threshold is the time to start the clock again. I'm going to reset it now for 30 seconds. And remember, we put this radial here to help us in identifying that, that point. So when the tip of the airplane symbol here touches this radial, I know that I am a beam. Uh, the runway threshold so again use it as an aid but don't uh, use it as the only uh, thing for you to decide when you are a beam you need to look outside remember this part of the maneuver is a visual maneuver all right so i'm gonna go ahead and start the clock now because we are we need to to be within about two miles from the runway i'm gonna go for about 25 seconds and then we'll do a turn from downwind to base to final now remember I am close to the runway extender center line and we have wind blowing from the right to the left so as the airplane turns it's going to be pushed by the wind toward this direction so instead of going a base turn and then a final turn I'll do just one continuous turn all the way to the runway if I was coming from the other side for a right downwind and I'm flying into the wind then I might go for a base turn initially and then for two seconds or three seconds and then turn to final. I actually use this if I'm flying into the wind. You see this uh, horizontal line which is indicating 1.25 miles. When this horizontal line passes the runway extended center line is the time for me to turn toward final. I'm talking about if I'm coming from this direction. Again from here being just very close to the runway extended center line and having 10 knots tailwind I'll do it just one continuous turn if the airplane is overshooting let's say the turn vector which we'll see in just a second overshoots the runway extended center line then I can increase my back angle if it is undershooting I want it to be close uh, to the runway extended center line but in this side of it because the wind is coming from the left but if it is uh, under shooting big time then I can reduce the bank angle as well so we are waiting for 25 seconds and then we'll do the turn okay so there is 25 seconds Now the runway heading is 324, but I'm going to go to a heading of 319er. 
again five degrees into the wind just to make sure that the airplane does not go blown away from the runway extended center line All right, I'm gonna stop here. If I was coming from the other side, right downwind, okay, so just try to imagine that this is just flipped and I'm flying into the wind now. As you can see, this is the picture I'm looking for, which is this 1.25 mile uh, horizontal line here. When it crosses the runway extended center line is the time for me to go uh, for towards the, uh, the runway. And it is by this distance. I use this technique even in real life. I'm doing a visual approaches. When it passes the runway extended center line by this much, I know it's the time for me to uh, do my turn toward the runway. So that's why we went for a complete turn toward the runway because I know that with this tailwind and being this close to the to the runway, I need I need to do it this way. So now I'm monitoring the turn vector. Again, if I see it slightly to the left, that's perfect. If it overshoots, then I'm gonna go with the 30 degrees bank angle. Okay, so it looks like it's fine. I might even go to 324 heading here, which is runway heading. Of course, we'll be looking outside now. As you can see, there's the approach lights, there's the runway. I'm not sure if I have four red or three red and one white. But let me talk about as you turn from base to final you are glancing outside and looking to the pappy if you have four red don't do anything just wait if you have one white and three red then immediately go here with a vertical speed of 500 feet per minute if you have two red two white then i'll go with 800 or 850 feet per minute if I have three white and one red, I'm going to go with 1,000 feet per minute. So this is dynamic. As you turn from base to final, make sure to glance outside, looking at the pappies, and then decide what vertical speed would you like to go with. Uh, the second thing is shortly, we'll disconnect the autopilot, auto throttle once you are feeling comfortable. So when you do that, what I suggest for you, is to start with a thrust setting of 55% in one especially if you have started the 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 descent already 55% in one is a good thrust setting to start with and you can adjust it of course if you need to uh, the other thing try to utilize everything that you have here to maintain runway extended center line so we'll use the track to see if you are aligned with the runway extended center line make sure to look at the far end of the runway and that will help you again in maintaining the runway center line. As far as the uh, glide path goes, uh, use the pitch mode and notice which pitch mode will give you 1000 feet per minute because you don't want to exceed that. If, however, for any reason you exceeded the 1000 feet per minute sync rate and you got sync rate, sync rate. Uh, GB was called that is not a requirement for you to do a go around just because of that call as far as I know okay so if you hear sync rate sync rate do a correction and then see whether you can do a safe landing or not if you can't do a safe landing then of course do a go around but don't do a go around just because you heard sync rate sync rate okay if you can just do a correction return back to at least 1000 feet per minute sync rate and continue the approach just do it all right so uh just me uh, let me just go back now to the circling itself the uh, the sequence of the of the uh, of the uh, of the steps here so you are turning from base to final you have decided on the vertical speed and now you disconnect autopilot auto throttle and ask the pilot monitoring to recycle the flight directors for you okay so you do it in the sequence you disconnect 
and then you ask the part monitoring to recycle the flight director for you so let me try see if I can do the landing so autopilot auto threaten 55% in one and I'm gonna make sure that the airplane is descending okay now I have three I'm gonna just bring up the BFT for a better view and my thrust is a little bit high so I'm gonna go a little bit lower okay so let's see if I can just get back on the runway center line I see I now have four white so might be hard to do it yeah, I got sync rate I'm correcting now trying to do uh, 1000 feet per minute sync rate I'm too red too wide so that's good looking at the far end the wind is pushing me to the right so I'm trying to get back on the center line okay now as long as you have a combination of colors that's good okay so we have three red one white I'm gonna continue to try to return back on glide path but I'll make a smaller correction as I get closer and closer to the runway especially in the flare phase of the maneuver you don't want to go aggressive I mean if you cross the threshold and you end up with four white as you cross as you cross that's fine just continue the 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 flare and try to touch down and touch down area 50. okay so for me this is unstable and I'll see you to go around okay go around it's gonna be you press toga set go around thrust flaps 15 positive rate gear up at 400 feet you request a roll mode We'll go with LNAV in this case, and then at 1000 feet, we'll start retracting flaps on schedule. Okay. So I'm going to play another clip that uh, I made uh, a better job in the approach, and we'll see how I was doing the correction with respect to the runway center line and the glide path. Okay, so we are here on a downwind, already uh, return, getting ready to turn to base. So 25 seconds, I turn all the way to the runway because remember the wind is at our tail and we are close to the runway extended center line. If you are doing a protected area of 2.3 miles, then definitely I'll go with a base turn first. And then as I talked earlier, using this line here when you are on the smallest scale and in D to decide when turn from base to final. But if you are doing it with such a, a small uh, circle 1.8 or 1.7 miles then I suggest you go all the way to runway heading if the wind is at your tail and keep an eye on the turn vector to decide whether you want to use the, uh, the bank angle selector to increase it or decrease it as you turn from base to final again we are looking outside now trying to see the pappies and to decide whether to go with a vertical speed or to hold down on the vertical speed it's a lot of things to do actually in the short time and I think the turn from base to final to landing is the most busy uh, phase of this of this maneuver so let's see now I'll try to align the airplane with the runway extended center line or the runway yeah runway center line looking at the far end of the runway I have set about 55 percent in one trying to get back on the center line and I think uh, you'll, I'll get sync rate now I've two red two eyes so that's perfect Again, I'm going to just tell it. Just make sure to look at the far end and you can see that you are aligned with the runway center line. Okay, that will help you a lot in maintaining the runway center line on, on the approach, especially if you have a crosswind. Three red, smaller correction. Remember, as you get closer to the runway, make smaller correction. Two red, two white now. For white, it's okay. I'm going to continue my approach. 
and then touch down on center line go for reversers and uh, the pilot monitoring to do the standard calls so uh, that's it for this uh, video as always i hope that you find this video of some benefit to you if you have any questions comments concerns or if you have any techniques that you'd like to share please leave a comment and until uh, next time this is abdul wish you safe flying and smooth landing thank you for watching